<sighs> J.K. Rees-Mogg, what do you even say? Well, not Sir J.K. Rees-Mogg. Despite being knighted in Boris Johnson's honours list, the disgraced PM's form honours list, I'm not indulging that nonsense. It's Rees-Mogg. Now, for years, hands up here, I was one of those who did not take this man seriously. I regarded him as a slightly laughable caricature. Essentially, a kind of like recruitment tool for anyone who opposed the Conservatives. Just put a picture of J.K. Rees-Mogg up, get them to sign up. I didn't realise he'd end up helping to run the country, as he did for a very long time. Um, the last few years really have been actually a nightmare, if we're going to be honest. Now, he's typical of the hardcore right in this country. Supports things like slashing tax on the rich, privatisation, deregulation, smashing unions. All of the things which have left this country in a big burning skip of a mess. He's also, to put it bluntly, not on the right side of the climate argument. Now, what he does is try to argue that our attempt to take on what I must emphasise is an existential threat to our existence. I prefer our species to continue, um, which is why we need net zero, which is we have net zero carbon emissions, um, because otherwise what's going to happen is we're all going to suffer catastrophic consequences, which we can already see with increasing extreme weather events. But in any case, he argues that our attempt to have net zero is what is making people's bills so expensive. Let's just hear what he says and take his nonsense to pieces. A YouGov poll commissioned by The Sun has revealed that the British people's number one priority is tackling inflation and reducing bills. Cheap energy is the key for lower inflation and economic growth. And the hasty shift to renewable energy has meant higher bills for and generally more expense to the public. Our energy bills, Britain's energy bills, are among the highest in the world. As much as 41% of British energy comes from renewable sources. France has been protected from this, where two-thirds of its energy comes from nuclear fuel, which is cheaper and more regular. Nuclear energy is obviously available when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine, and we get it from the French when we're in that position via cables across the channel. But even our green comrades in the EU aren't going as far as we are in the net zero obsession. Britain's energy bills are among the highest in the world. In fact, we're in third place in energy costs behind Germany and Denmark, who, I should mention, have not, not left the European Union, not yet, at any rate. And what do all three of these countries have in common? We are all heavily reliant on unreliable renewable energy. As much as 41% of British energy comes from renewable sources. In Germany, as much as 40%, 46%. In Denmark, it's as much as 67%. And even with all the renewable energy investment, all three countries have not been shielded by the rocketing energy prices from the war in Ukraine. And of course, part of the reason for the rocketing prices has been that there's been a reluctance to invest in new fossil fuel sources. OK, so firstly, look, price rises are overwhelmingly driven by exposure to the rising price of gas. Now, by 2021, renewables in this country were responsible for 29% of our electricity generation. That's the equivalent of £6.1 billion pounds worth of gas, which otherwise we would have to be importing. Now, according to Carbon Brief, who are the experts here, they do the detailed analysis, they know what they're talking about, unlike Jacob rees -Mogg. But according to them, around 90% plus of increase in bills in a, in a one-year period was rising price of gas, which more than tripled. That's why your energy bills obviously suffered the massive increases that they did. Now, there are actually so-called, we're going to use some terms here, but I can't think we can get through it, contracts for difference. That's where you have a low-carbon electricity generator and a low-carbon contracts company, and they make an agreement which reduces bills by a modest amount. Um but by 2027, as more of those projects come online, it's set to save each household nearly £100 a year. Now, with renewables, we're talking about them being four times cheaper plus than gas. Depends on the time you're at, but they're much cheaper than gas. Now, we've got these green levies. This is what they go on about. But they're a tiny percentage of bills, around, around 8%. And they're an investment to reduce bills in the future by ensuring that we're weaned off the likes of gas, and we actually have energy in this country, which we could depend on. We have energy security. Now, remember David Cameron, he was our prime minister for actually quite a while, well, not a while, six years, and then he destroyed his career, which was quite funny. I remember that when he resigned as prime minister. It was the third most important news story that day. <laughs> anyway, he did this whole reinvention of the Conservatives, hugger hoddy, changed the Conservative Tory logo to a tree. 
And then he pivoted in power to let's cut the green crap. Do you remember that? That's that was in response to Labour saying that when they came to power, that if they came to power, which they didn't unfortunately, but that, that there would be a cap on energy bills. Now, recent analysis by Carbon Brief shows that gutting, as he did, we cut, we did cut the green crap, as David Cameron put it, gutting energy efficiency subsidies like insulating homes and businesses, which collapsed massively, de facto banning onshore wind in England, and they did that by ending subsidies, and scrapping zero carbon the zero carbon home standard that is where by building homes when they're built they have to have um, energy efficiency standards uh, of a certain standard that was abolished you had a million built with lower energy efficiency standards and therefore higher energy bills so that left energy bills nearly two and a half billion pounds higher than if those climate policies the green crap were not scrapped um that and there's also, as well, the, the, the cost of energy supplies going out of business. There are other costs which are added onto bills. But it wasn't renewable energy which did it. And actually, if we'd invested more and not scrapped those things, then we wouldn't be in that mess. Now, another study by WWF and Scottish Power found that green upgrades can cut energy bills by £1,800 a year, installing green technology and so on in people's homes. Now, the UK does have its own specific problems. Electricity is run here mostly through wholesale markets. So generations have to uh, bid to operate if they like the price. And most rely, we have a disproportionate reliance on gas for heating. Uh, we've had other things, other problems to deal with. For example, extreme weather. You had in, uh, Europe's worst drought for 500 years. He goes on about nuclear power that had a massive impact on French nuclear, ho hobbled hydropower. Um, but what renewable energy does is it protects us from these market shocks. It's not true those green levies are responsible for our high energy prices. Green tech, green energy will bring down our energy bills and give us the security that obviously that we desperately need. Now, it, what's so maddening about this is we had the destruction of industry in this country. Entire communities based around industries which provided often secure well-paid unionized jobs they were stripped away the hearts of these communities stripped away and never replaced and this is an opportunity to have a green industrial revolution where you can create well-paid secure jobs with dignity which can help prevent a massive catastrophic emergency which threatens the future existence of our civilization it is a no-brainer unless you live on another planet. Well, I wish some of these people did live on another planet so we could save the one we've got, because unfortunately, that is the only habitable one we've currently available to us, unless anyone's found any others. Elon Musk, I'm sure, maybe will come to your, come to your rescue. Maybe you can go and colonize Mars. But obviously, these, the, the arguments made by the likes of Jacob Rees-Mogg collide with reality. We need to build up Renewable energies, they're much cheaper than gas, will be less exposed, obviously, to market shocks, the likes of Russia invading Ukraine and all the impact that's had on us. And we can create lots of secure jobs, which are well paid. And we can stop our species going down the plug hole of history, which would be helpful. Jacob Rees-Mogg was talking nonsense. Make sure that we're always taking these arguments on because we are talking about the most important issue facing all of us, which is the existence of our civilization, as I keep saying. So unless we push back, these ideas will be accepted. And that's pretty dangerous. Please like, subscribe, do support us on patreon.com forward slash I'll see you in a bit.